In this video, we're going to demonstrate the user interface controls on the British Drama Toolkit library. So starting in the top left hand corner, we have the LED light. When this is flickering red and green, it means your samples are still preloading. Wait until this is solid green before you hit play. Next to this, we have the CPU meter, which is an indication of how hard the processor on your machine is working. To the right of the CPU meter is the disk meter, which is an indication of how hard the samples disk you're streaming the data from is working. To the right of this is the memory meter, which is an indication of how much sample content is preloaded into the RAM of your machine. The voices meter indicates how many audio threads you're streaming at any particular one point in time. We then have the refresh icon, which is really useful if you have anything like sticking MIDI notes. This can be right clicked for further options. To the right of this is the MIDI channel option, which can be clicked and you can assign the plugin to one of 16 MIDI channels. To the right of this, we have a global tuning and panning control followed by a master volume. In the preset settings, we have a few different options. So the top option, dynamics, allows us to change the behavior of the dynamics control. By default, we can see that this is set to compressed velocity high, which will act as a MIDI limiter. So that's going to enable you to keep the velocities of your performance within a particular threshold. The velocity map to dynamics is where we assign short articulations, which traditionally respond to the velocity of your controller to the dynamics fader itself. And then we have full velocity range, which is where if we start at zero, we have a soft dynamic. And if we move up, we move to a very loud dynamic and that will follow in its timbre. The velocity control in this library is quite useful because this changes the plugins behavior depending on how hard or soft you hit the keys. So for example, if you have a MIDI controller that responds um, in a way which is overly sensitive, you may wish to have this as exponential negative, which means you can hit the keys harder and still trigger a softer dynamic. If you wanted the opposite of that, there's an exponential positive, and then there's a linear velocity, which is the default. There is also a shelf velocity. The CC mappings enables you to clear and reset all the CC assignments. So if I was to clear this and I right click, we can see that the dynamics control no longer has a CC1 assignment. If I reset this back to the plugin defaults, we can see now that that is now MIDI CC number one. To the right of this, we have the settings option. Now this is where we have all the global settings for the particular plugin. Um, it's where we can change things on the interface, such as uh, it's the fault scale. So how big the plugin opens, whether we choose to show the key switches. Um, there's also audio options, which is where we can change how much sample content is preloaded into the RAM of your machine. And also a plugin option, which is where we can choose which preset opens by default. If you want some more detailed information on the settings, please do see the user manual. Below the setting, we have the expand and collapsed view. So that's the collapsed view. And then we have the expanded view. And to the left of this, we have the preset menu. So using the drop down icon on the left hand side of the preset menu, we can see that that now expands the preset menu. On the left hand side, we have a number of different filters. So if I wanted to only see the saxophone patches, I can click the saxophone filter. And we can see here on the right, they only show the saxophones. Um, we can then favorite a sound using the starred icon and that will show up under the star filter. We have the ability to preview a sound and also hover over the information icon to learn more about that particular sound. We then have a clear option of all the filters so we can clear any filters that you have selected. We can load a patch by double clicking or clicking and loading. To the right of this, we have the two different arrows which enable you to cycle up and down the preset menu. If you have a filter enabled, such as reads, it will move up and down within that filter. 
We then have a save option, which enables you to save the preset. When we've saved our own user preset, it will show up in the user filter at the bottom. Moving down the interface, we can see that there is a slightly different layout compared to what is traditionally associated with the Spitfire plugin. What we see here is a user interface which will visually respond to the velocity that you are triggering the notes at. So if I play really softly on my MIDI keyboard, we can hear there we're triggering the textured layer and the user interface is showing us that we're triggering the textured layer. If I was to hit this really hard, we can see there that we're triggering some louder samples and also the softer samples. The number of layers that one can trigger will vary patch on patch, however the user interface will always show how many different layers are available to you. We then have a expression control to the right. Expression is a volume control and that operates within the master volume that is found in the top menu. We then have the dynamics fader, which we've already discussed, and that will help you control the timbre and the performance of the overall library. Moving down the interface, we have the technique view, which is where we can see all the different techniques that are available to us. These can be switched to trigger different types of sound, And to the right of this, we then have the Technique Editor. The Technique Editor allows us to rearrange the order of the techniques that are available to us. It allows us to remove them if you want to remove those particular techniques from RAM. And on the left-hand side, it has a preset menu similar to what we have at the top, which is where we have the ability to preview a sound and also hover over the information to learn more about that particular technique. We can then make any changes permanent by clicking save in the bottom right corner. To the right of the technique editor, we have a load of different options for the techniques. So the first one is the trigger method. The trigger method is how we want to change articulation. So for example, by default, these are set to key switch. However, if we use the drop down menu, we can change this to say CC range. So those of you familiar with UACC might change using the CC range, which is where we can set the technique to CC32 and assign it a unique value. Now, every time I trigger CC32 at value one, that will now change to this technique. We also have the ability to change based on the velocity range, which might be very useful in the British Drama Toolkit library. If you want to hit it more aggressively, you might want a different articulation altogether instead of the loud layer that you find at the top of the patch. We then have the MIDI channel option, which is where we can change depending on the MIDI channel we have available to us, the speed of how fast we play, and also a program change. It's worth noting that if you do decide to pick one of these options to change articulation, such as MIDI channel, you then have to also move to the next one and set the same thing up again. Underneath the trigger method is where we set the parameters. So here, for example, we can say, I need to set this to MIDI channel two because the brassy short articulation is set to MIDI channel one. Below the options within the trigger method, we have the activate option. This is where we can choose between a normal and a latched state of key switching. If you have latched available, the techniques will momentarily change to the next articulation before switching back to the previous. A normal switching method will simply change the technique and it will stay fixed. We then have the round robin options, which is where we can set how many different samples are cycling through each time we press that particular note. And then the round robins can also be reset on the transport. So every time you hit play in your DAW, that will then reset the round robin cycle. The reset from key allows us to place key switches on the keyboard in order to reset round robins. At the top of the keyboard, I'm going to place some key switches and we can see that there are now three 
green keys available to us. This will allow us to reset any round robin that we wish if we want to say substitute in a different performance. It also allows us to key switch out a particular round robin that we maybe do not like for say a tuning reason or there may be in this library a slight texture variation that might not be working with the music that you like. We then have the options which is where we can bring in more round robins to that particular um, technique. We then have the transpose function which allows us to change the range of the performed notes. In the very top right corner of the techniques we have a keyboard shimmier which if I was to transpose down the keyboard we can see I can slide by clicking and dragging the default key switches. We then have a lock which locks all this in place. In the middle of the interface we have the view select which is where I can now change to the signal page. In the very top left of the signal page, we have the ability to save and load a preset. So here, for example, I can save my own preset. I can load that particular preset. We then have a refresh icon, which will reset this back to the default position. We then have two signal faders for the close and the tree mic, which can be clicked and dragged to adjust the volume of that signal. Turning this all the way down will disable the signal and also unload those samples from memory. To the right of this, we then have some different controls. So we have an attack and a release. The attack, when increased, will give you the ability to set how long the sound fades in for in seconds. The release allows you to set how long the sound will take to fade out once you've let go of a key. Again, this is in seconds. We then have the tightness control, which is useful for short articulations, which is where increased, it will cut into the start time of the sample, meaning that if you're quantizing short performances, this is really useful because it gives you a snappier response. The further you increase this, the more unnatural your performance does become, however, because you are taking off that initial uh, attack of the note. We then have to the right hand side a reverb control, which when increased will give you a greater return of reverb. And using the drop down menu below, we have a few different impulse responses that you can change to. Again, in the top right hand corner, we have a lock to make all this permanent. If you have any further questions, please get in touch with us at spitfireaudio.com forward slash support. Thanks for watching Spitfire Clips. Let us know if it was too long, too short, too fast or too slow in the comments down below. Hit like if we answered your question and subscribe for more clips, tips, tricks and exclusive Spitfire content.